Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where we take trade paperbacks and single issues, and we break them down into digestible bites for you to understand. And then we read it dramatically back to you. All alterations to the panels, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective company. Today we're going to be covering the Batman Superman event, Nemesis Objective, which happened in Batman Superman 16 through 21. Our story begins with a man named Chuck. He thought it would be a good day to throw on a Superman costume and provide a brighter future for the children of the Metropolis Children's Hospital. He just loves to see their smiling faces. Meanwhile, Superman, Supergirl, and Steel are all flying through the air so that they can release some killer whales. It's a happy ending for the whales, and Superman even comments how this isn't the norm. Typically, something goes sour in a hurry. But it would appear that the Man of Steel has spoken too soon, as one of the whales explodes from an unknown impact. He quickly moves into action, blocking the shockwave before it can hit the civilians on the nearby ship. And then he looks around, trying to see if he can find the shooter. He just, he scans the area. He uses his supervision. But he doesn't have time to find anybody before Steel, Crypto, and Supergirl all get shot in the chest by this unknown assailant. They all survive their hits, but Steel asks Superman what hit them. Superman looks around, worried. I don't know. That was too fast for even me to see. And then the situation gets even worse, as Chuck and the Superman's costume is shot in the chest while performing for the children. Chuck may just be a man, but he doesn't want to alarm anyone, and he quickly tells the children with a smile that he got a little ketchup on his chest. He just needs to wipe it off, if they'll give him a minute. He leaves the room, and then he collapses on the floor of the hospital, dead. Clark and Lois head to the hospital to report on a man who was shot that day for wearing a Superman costume. And the moment that Clark realizes that this man was shot instead of himself, he takes off to get help. Batman arrives that night, and right off, he's worried. Normally, Clark at least tells him hello, but tonight it's all business. So the two of them head off to the children's ward of the hospital so that they can investigate the crime scene. As Batman looks around at everything, one of the children walks over to Superman. I thought you were dead! As Superman just turns to him, no, no, I'm fine. The little boy then just holds out his hand. I saved one of your beanbags! So Superman sits down and he begins to play with the children, asking them what they saw. They told him the story of how Superman was just juggling, and then there was ketchup on his chest, and a bug there. And that's what catches Superman's attention. A bug? Batman takes Superman back to the Batcave, where they go over the entire case. They have somebody with the capability of making mosquito-sized drones that could punch through a tank. This individual appears to be playing games. He's injured Superman's closest friends, and then he shot a completely random civilian for wearing the S. Batman then turns to Superman. You're dealing with a Joker. A remorseless, obsessive, insane murderer who's playing a game that you will never understand. Batman continues by explaining how you handle a Joker. You prepare as best as you can, and you'll win some. But you won't be able to plan for everything, and you will lose some. Then eventually, you'll come to terms with what you need to do to him. Superman stops Batman. Did you kill the Joker, Bruce? But Batman just shakes his head. No. And I tell myself I never will. I don't want to become like you, Bruce, Superman tells him. And Batman just replies with, I don't either. But before their talk can continue, an alarm in the Batcave goes off. Security breach, and all of Batman's cameras go offline. Superman, fry the computer, Batman yells to him. But the cameras all come right back on, and Superman tells him, wait, we got our system back. But Batman panics. Those aren't my cameras, Superman! And that's when they hear it, a voice. <laughs> of course they aren't. Those are mine. And what I love the most about this world is that panic in your voice, Superman. The mystery man then shows three new cameras pointing at people in three different locations in the world. Lex Luthor, a pop star, and a general who's heading up peace negotiations. Before Superman can even leave the Batcave, all three of them are shot. So Superman flies at top speed to Lex Luthor so that he can tear off Lex Luthor's body armor, which is the only thing that saved him. The pop star died, and the general died. But how does Superman know both of them? Well, the pop star that Superman prevented from committing suicide by talking her off the ledge a year ago. Then the general he saved, but he told no one about it, as it would have created problems for the peace negotiations. All three of these individuals are people that Superman saved, and as the voice tells him, he's gonna kill everyone the Superman ever tried to save. But then the voice vanishes, and Batman gets control of his computers back, and everything just goes back to normal. 
A few days pass and Batman and Superman are at a loss. The moment Superman saved Lex, the voice stopped and they haven't heard it since. They continue their research hoping to find this Joker of Superman's and even get help from Hector Hammond in exchange for a few of Batman's memories. But all of this does is lead them to another alien on the planet and the only individual that Hector Hammond thinks could have done this. Lobo, whom is currently in Metropolis being chased and winning. Well, he was winning until Superman comes rocketing in and throws Lobo down. Lobo hops back up to his feet and he fires smart shots at Superman, but Superman just looks at them. They aren't that smart, he comments as he redirects them all back at Lobo. Then through the explosions, he grabs Lobo by the shirt. Why'd you do it? He asks Lobo. And Lobo just replies with, I shot at you in self-defense! You punched me first! So after Superman clarifies what he's talking about, Lobo just replies with, That wasn't me! And Superman just yells, Don't lie to me! But Batman stops them. Superman, those shots he fired at you were almost hard enough to go through anything, but they're made from brown door fragments and they would have left a lot of residue. Realizing that Lobo isn't the man that they're looking for, Superman tells him to get off of this planet. And Lobo just says, make me. So Superman throws him into space and then rockets up there to make sure that Lobo is away from the planet. And while in space, the voice returns. Busy, busy, busy. But you aren't any closer to finding me, are you? While Superman takes off at light speed around the globe multiple times trying to find whoever is talking, Batman is having his own conversation. We have every one of Superman's friends covered, but this villain is still on the loose and we aren't any closer to finding him. He then turns to Lois Lane who is standing behind him. Miss Lane, I have a new plan that needs some bait. Superman and Supergirl end up arguing about using the Fortress of Solitude, which keeps Superman busy long enough for Batman to enact his plan. Batman calls up Superman. I have a plan. We're going to use Lois's bait, but I'll have trackers established so I can track whoever fires the bullet. But Superman quickly puts it all together. The killer is listening, and Batman knows that. He has left Superman only one course of action. Attempt to try and catch the bullet from hitting Lois. So, he and Supergirl take off at max speed to Lois and Batman. But the bullet is also on its way there right now. Lois looks at Batman. I'm terrified but I would have kicked your ass if you didn't include me. And just then, the bullet comes rocketing in, and Superman arrives to catch it, but it moves out of his way. So Supergirl reaches in to catch it, but it moves again, getting out of her way, and it hits Batman square in the chest. Everyone panics as Batman falls off the cliff with a trail of green smoke coming off of his chest, and Superman takes off to catch him, and he asks, this was your plan all along? But Batman gasps as he says, it was the only way to get on the strike. So how were you going to protect Lois? Superman asks as he floats Batman back to the cliff. That was always your job, Clark. They land on the cliff and Batman tells Superman to look for the bullet because it didn't go through his armor. And Superman pulls it out of Batman's chest and in shock, he realizes that this isn't a bullet. It's a Kandorian from the shrunken bottle city of Kandor. Kandor was an amazing and beautiful city from the planet of Krypton, and just before the destruction of Krypton, Brainiac bottled up the city and brought it to his ship to become a part of his collection. Eventually, Superman discovered the bottle city on Brainiac's ship, and he discovered that its inhabitants were in suspended animation. But Superman was distracted and fighting against Brainiac to save the planet Earth. While this was going on, the location that Superman moved the bottle to, the Fortress of Solitude, was turned into dust and the city went missing. Well, as it turns out, our mysterious villain is the one who took Kandor from the fortress, and he then awoke the inhabitants of Kandor, exposing them to the yellow sun, and he sent them off to destroy everything that Superman ever cared about. Batman's trackers trace the city's location to Iceland, where Superman, Supergirl, Batman, Lois Lane, and Ray Palmer, the Atom, all head to. The plan is to get into Kandor and find out why they want to kill Superman, and who is giving the orders. Batman, Superman, and Supergirl all agree to go inside to find Supergirl's old friend Tally. If they can find one friend inside, they might stand a chance, because inside is an entire army of Kandorians. Lois then insists that she wants to go with them, but Superman tells her you can't. And she simply asks, why not? Batman's going. But Superman just replies with, well yeah, he's Batman. The three of them go inside the little bottled city and very quickly Superman and Supergirl can feel their powers fading. This bottle recreates the environment of Krypton and on Krypton, Kryptonians don't have their powers. 
While looking around the inside of this entire city, they see various Kandorian soldiers all marching to a synchronized heartbeat. And Superman quickly realizes, somebody is controlling each and every one of the Kandorians. Everyone in the city is a victim to this crazy killer. While running around, Superman stumbles onto a device that calls to the House of El. And it appears to be a device that was keeping the House of El records. It then informs Superman that his mother's sister and his mother's mother are both here in Kandor. Something that he didn't know this whole time. Taken back by this news, he then asks the robot, Where are they now? And it informs him, it does not know. But it can tell him what they were told when they were awoken from their eternal slumber. Everything began with Jor-El, Krypton's greatest genius and greatest villain. Jor-El framed the greatest scientist doctor, Zandu, and he exiled him to the Phantom Zone. Then Jor-El tampered with the natural order of things, bottling up Kandor and removing it from the planet while simultaneously blowing up the entire planet of Krypton. Jor-El's son, Kal-El, then took the bottled city and it kept them imprisoned in a land of giants while suspended in living death in the central tower. Now Kandor must stand against the House of El and kill every last knight of Jor-El. Superman is taken back by this news and he stands there shocked. That's all lies! My father was a hero! He tried to warn Krypton and Brainiac stole Kandor, not me! But he was so loud over his refusal of this that the Kandorian soldiers overheard and they simply ask, Wait, you're Kal-El? They quickly throw a bomb at Batman and Superman catches it with his bare hands. It does hurt him slightly though as his powers are beginning to fade further. He then turns to Supergirl. We're going to the tower to stop this. Batman will save our family, but we need to stop the rest of the Kandorians from being brainwashed because there are 7 billion unprotected humans out there and if this city goes free, nothing can stop them. The final battle begins with Batman running off to save Superman's family and the two super-powered individuals flying up and destroying the tower that houses everyone piece by piece. They seem to be successful as Batman begins freeing everyone and the tower begins to crumble. But then an evil laughter begins to fill the entire bottled city. <laughs> Superman, Supergirl, and Batman all look up to see Zadu, the Phantom King. After getting loose during the Superman doomed saga, this is the plan that he's been setting up to take down the Son of El the entire time. But he didn't show up alone. Even in large compared to Superman and Supergirl, Zadu still fears his power. So he brought along Superman's long lost family and Supergirl's friend Tally. Both Superman and Supergirl get their faces punched in as they try to convince their own family and friends to stop beating on them. And Superman yells out, Mother Prime and Mara Van, please stop. We are your family. But Mara just swings at Superman again. Liar! Bite your snake tongue! And as Superman lets himself be beat on by his own grandmother, which leaves her questioning why he would just stand there taking the beating, Batman shows up and explains. He won't hurt you because he won't hurt his family. But you're not my grandmother! And he reveals a new device, a red sun generator which saps the powers of Kryptonians so that they become normal humans. Batman explains that after Superman became Doomsday, they had to find a way to potentially stop another Super Doom, so he built this as a backup measure. Supergirl turns to Superman, this is your friend? And Superman just says, he's always prepared. So with the family defeated, Batman prepares to leave, but Mara gets back up and she roasts Batman with her heat vision. Zadu declares that it took some work, but he has finally gotten Superman's best friend. Superman and Supergirl finally accept what they need to do, and they begin to fight back against their own family as Superman thinks to himself, Damn you, Zatu. Damn you forever. And he then tells his grandmother that he is sorry, but he uses his freeze breath to hold her in place. Zatu just laughs again. People of Kandor, this is your king, and I need you to come here and kill the son of El. Superman begins to beat on his own people while saying to himself, Kandor, Krypton, Mother, Father, I'm so sorry. And then he grabs the red sun generator that is sitting where Batman was left standing. And he blows it up, creating a bomb that saps all of the Kandorian's powers away. Luckily, Supergirl and Superman are so charged up by the sun that they still have a little left after the bomb. Superman then looks up at Zadu. You can either surrender or I can beat you to death. You choose. But Zadu doesn't have to choose, because Batman wasn't killed. Ray Palmer saw the heat vision coming, and he shrank Batman even further just before it hit him, saving his life. 
Then Batman, Lois Lane, and the Atom all steer the Atom's miniature ship into Zadu's head, and they manage to break the bandages that allow Zadu to stay in the real world, and without his bandages that contain him, he begins to fade back to the Phantom Zone, to become nothing more than the true Phantom King again. The Kandorians all begin to come to their senses, except for Superman's family. You see, Zandu infected them so strongly that his touch is remaining with them even after his influence is gone. So Superman places his long-lost family back into suspended animation until the Kandorians can somehow find a cure. Lois then looks to Batman. Is this what a victory over Joker looks like? And Batman says, you take what you can get. Superman can either wallow in anger and fear waiting for the next psychopath, or he can step into the sunlight. And what does Superman do, my dear listeners? He counts his blessings, and he goes to the ones who survived this horrific ordeal. And that is the story of Batman Superman, the Nemesis Objective. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I do highly recommend picking up these books yourself. Now, don't forget, we have a gaming variety channel known as Eligible Monster, where we pretty much cover every video game in existence with complete stories, lists about the coolest things in games, Easter eggs you didn't know about, and just us playing games in general. Please go check out that channel. The link is in the description down below. Also, don't forget about our Twitter, at Comicstorian, and our subreddit, r slash Comicstorian. I'll see you guys next time, right here.